Okay, we are going to be solving exponential equations today. And what you're going to see is that we use logarithms to solve exponential equations and exponential equations to solve logarithms. That's because they're inverses. That's the value of inverses, one of the values. All right, so here we have There, here we have an exponential equation. Three to the X power equals eight. Okay, well really, we can just use the uh, conversions that we've been using for the past two days, but let's use a slightly easier way to do this. Okay. I'm going to move over a little bit. I'm going to take the log, the log base 10. of both sides, the log of both sides. Now here's the reason I have to use a log, some kind of log. I could take the LN of both sides, but I personally prefer to use the LN only when I have an E in the equation. So here I've taken the log of both sides. The reason is that logs bring down exponents. I'm going to use the power rule now. To bring this exponent down. So I'll have X times the log of three. I don't really need that. It would be better to put it here because of course that's what you have to do with your calculator if you're putting this in your calculator. Never, never, never use a calculator before the last step. Otherwise, you could get round off error, which would cause you to get the problem wrong. All right, log three is a number. I'm going to divide both sides by log three. The log threes cancel out, leaving me with X equals the log of eight over the log of three. This is called the exact answer. This is not what my math lab is looking for. or the exact solution. That's what they call it. I prefer answer because answer says what it is. Most people use the word answer, but exact solution. Why? Because it is what X equals. Now, of course, you can't do anything with that, not in real life, so you would put this in your calculator and round to four decimal places, and I just realized I do have the final answers here. Ta-da! So X is about... Well, 
1.8928. And that's the answer you should get in your calculator if you've been very careful to close your parentheses. In fact, in the calculator, this is what you should see. Log. There's a paren. You type eight and then you have to close the parens. Then hit the division sign. Hit log, L-O-G. And then log parenthesis comes up. Put a three, close. Now hit enter. And that should get you this answer. You, you might have to round that final fourth digit. You might not. Now let's go on. We're going to do, I'm going to try to do all of these. Okay. Uh, because this is all new to you. Log equals, uh, no, no, no. Solve for X. Number two, this was number one. Let me write this down. Number one, in your homework. We're starting out easy and we're building up. Number two. Two to the X equals 32. Here's our exponential function. Now there are actually two ways to do this. If you know, and most people don't, but if you happen to know that 32 equals 2 to the 5th power, then this is how you would do that. Well, the 2's are the same, so obviously x equals 5. It's very handy if you happen to know that 2 to the 5th power is 32, but not everybody knows, as I said. So, let's assume that you don't know. We're going to take the log of both sides. That's because only the log can bring the x down in front so that we can solve for it. There. Now, I bring the x down. That's the value of using logarithms. I'll have x times log 2 equals log 32. Log 2 is just a number. <clears throat> So divide both sides of the equation by log 2. Cancel out the log 2 on the left. So you'll have x equals log 32 divided by log 2. Always close your parentheses. In the calculator, the argument has to be totally enclosed in parentheses. Even if your book doesn't do it, the calculator makes you do it. Now, the answer should be the same. You can put it in your calculator and see. This is the exact answer, exact solution. I want you to be aware of that. 
but on rare occasion, you actually get an exact solution from a calculator. How do I know if it's an exact solution? Because there are no decimals. That is, there's not a long decimal that you have to round to four decimal places. There's just a five. That's because back in the old days, I could have done this by hand and not needed a calculator, not had one, right? There are inventions that came in in the 1980s, scientific calculators. I know, because that's when I was in college. Let's look at number three. Number three. Base 3 raised to the power 3x equals 9. Oh, come on, you can do this by hand. 3 to the 3x equals 3 to the 2. You want to try to get the same base, but you know that 9 is 3 to the 2 power. So what have you got here? You've got a base raised to that power equals the same exact base raised to that power, so 3x has to equal 2. They have to be the same. How could they not be? Question mark. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. So x equals 2 thirds. If you were to put this in your calculator, you would get 0.6667, which would not be the exact answer. And what they're asking for here, you always want to read these blue letters underneath the answer box, and that's an answer box in my math lab. It says type an integer or a fraction, which means your answer is going to be exact. It has to be exact. So I believe this is the only way you could work this one. But it's not hard to know that 9 is 3 to the 2. Yeah, you can manage that. But now we're back to the calculator. You might be glad to know. Number 4. we're going to have 4 to the x power equals 13. These are very, 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 very basic exponential equations for you to start getting used to the methods for solving them. So I'm going to put parentheses just because I think it makes it cleaner. Now, the log is designed to bring the x down in front. We call that the power rule. Log 4 equals log 13. Log 4 is just a number. It's a des well, yeah, it's a decimal. So divide both sides by log 4. Cancel, cancel. So the exact answer is x equals the log of 13. Over the log of 4. Now what they're asking for is a decimal. Do not round until the final answer. 
then round to four decimal places as needed. So, oh, oh, well here, same thing though. Type an integer or a decimal. Round, do not round until the final answer. That's because you get round off error. Then round to four decimal places as needed. Use commas to separate answers. You've only got one answer. So according to the book, the calculator answer you get, if you're careful to close your parentheses, is 1.8502. OK, how is everybody doing? I don't hear any screams of agony. So I bet everyone is still alive. Number five. Now we're branching out a little bit. Number five is six to the X equals two to the X plus two. Well, there's no way, even though six equals two times three, there's no way you're going to get two as a base. So give it up. We're going to take the log of both sides. The log of 6x equals the log of 2 to the power x plus 2. Let me scroll this up. OK, now the log forces the um, exponents to come down. So we're going to have X times log 6 equals. Here you've got two terms up here in your exponent. So you're going to put parentheses around them. X plus 2 times log 2. OK, now we are not just going to divide by log 6. You've got an X on both sides. You have to get your X terms together. So here is where you have to remember that log 2 if you were to put that in your calculator, you would find that it's just a number. A very ugly decimal number, but it's just a number. So treat it like it's just a number. We're going to leave X times log six by itself for a few minutes. And I'm going to distribute this number, log 2, to the x and to the 2 in the parentheses. So x times log 2 plus 2 times log Okay, my next step. See, we've gone up a grade in complication. I have to move this term 
that has X in it, normally, since this is a number, I would have that in front of the X, right? The same over here. Log six is just a number. So in a way, log six is the coefficient of X over here, and log two is the coefficient of X over here. It's just not the way we write it. Now I'm going to subtract subtract X times log, log two from both sides of this equation. So, so minus X times log two minus X times log two. Okay. Over here on the right, X times log two minus X times log two zeros out. Leaving me with two times log two. But over here on the left, I'm going to have X times log six minus X times log two. I have my X's together. Why? Because it's not just that I want to, it's that I have to. If I'm going to solve for X's, I have to get my X terms together on one side of the equal sign and my number terms together on the other side of the equal sign. OK, here now watch. X is a common factor. I'm going to pull it out to the front. And I'll be left with the leftovers. Log. Six. Minus log. Two. And that equals two times log two. OK, we're getting close to being done. There is light. At the end of the tunnel. Now remember those identities you had to learn those those principles of logarithms, the arithmetic of logarithms. Log six minus log two is log six over two. And while we're at it, two times log two is exactly the same thing as the log of two raised to the two. So the two in front came up and became the logarithm. I mean, became the exponent. Duh, duh. This is still the quotient rule here. This is, no, it's not the quotient rule. This is the quotient rule. This is the power rule. 
Now look at the wonderfully easier way we have cleaned this up. Six divided by two is three. So we're going to have X times the log of three equals the log of four. Because two squared is four. Log three is the number, log four is the number. I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by log three. Boom, boom. So X equals the log of four. over the log of three. And this is the exact solution. Anything else will be an approximation, but in all likelihood, we're being asked for the approximation. Do not round until the final answer. I haven't put, I haven't touched a calculator which admittedly I can't touch today. Um, then round to four decimal places as needed. The word round means you're getting an approximation. So X is about, and you see the squiggle there, X is about 1.2619. Let me make that smaller. Let's go back over this and go through the steps. What are the principles of logarithms that you learned yesterday that we're using today? Well, this isn't one of them. This is taking the log of both sides. Using the log, let us bring the exponents down in front so that we could solve for X eventually. So this is the power rule. Then we distributed log two to the X and to the two in parentheses. So this is just distribution. And what could we call this? Moving the X terms. Um, gather the X terms, I don't even know. So, um, down here, factor by GCF. Yeah, this is where we pulled the X out and we're left with X times log six minus log two. Okay, so this is factor by GCF.
OK. Factor by GCF. This is using the quotient rule of logarithms. Right there. This is using the power rule of logarithms. So I would write power rule. Over here, but over here. Quotient rule. So quo. Rule. Best I can do. OK, now we cancel. This is just typical solve the equation stuff. And here is typical solve the equation stuff. And here is put it in the calculator. Calculator. OK, now let's take a look at this. We're on number five, yeah. So here are the rules we used. Constantly using those rules that we talked about yesterday, which is why you have to learn them. Number six is just like number five. But I'm going to do it for you, but do it faster, not talk as much. To which you can say, oh, thank goodness. It's what we all think about our teachers. 12 to the X equals 4 to the X plus 3. I don't have to put parentheses around there, but they are grouped together into one thing, one, one exponent. Now I take the log of both sides. Log of 12X, 12, 12 to the X, equals the log of 4 to the X plus 3. Make sure I have that right, yes. Now the log lets me bring down my exponents. X times the log of 12 equals parentheses X plus three. Remember it's one thing. I have to keep the parentheses around it. Times log four. Now I distribute log four to both of those numbers. So I'll have x log 12 equals x times log four plus three times log four. Now I've got to get my X terms together. So I subtract X log four from both sides of the equation. On the, on the right, x log 4 minus x log 4 is 0. So I have 0 plus 3 log 4. I can leave the 3 down, you know, from the previous um, example, previous problem, that I am eventually going to move that 3 up there because it just makes life easier, especially on the calculator. 
where if you get one little parenthesis out of line, you've had it. OK, this is going to be. X log 12. Minus X log 4. Now I pull out the GCF, which conveniently happens to be X. And write down the leftovers. Ah, uh, that three is annoying me. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. log four to the third power. Throw that in your calculator real fast. You discover it's 64. Four times four times four is 64. Now what that does is that lets me also say, well, I'm using the quotient, uh, I'm using the power rule on this line and then on the next line use the quotient rule. So I could at least keep my, my rules on the same side. Something to consider. X. Log 12 minus log 4 is log. Of 12 over 4. And I don't really need that. Right there. X times log 12 over 4 equals. log 64. I know I must be putting you to sleep. But remember, you can always watch the video. And it's important that you see all the steps that go into doing this. OK, so I'm going to have log 3 up X log 3 equals log 64. Yeah, that was before. OK. So now finally we're at the end almost log 3. I'm dividing by log 3 on both sides of the equation. Boom, boom, log 3 is just a number, so I cancel it out. X equals the exact answer being log 64 divided by log 3. And the approximate answer is 3.7856 six. You see, if you do it, the more you do it, the quicker you can do it. Just don't try to skip steps. It's a disaster if you do. OK, now. Take the log of both sides. Uh, take the log of both sides. I mean, for the most part, we're repeating problems, problem types that we've already done. So let's move on to the really hard ones. Number 11.
e to the x, e is the number that's about 2.7, remember. e to the x plus e to the negative x equals something, 7. O M G. Well, your book does this. I mean, your book. Um, the question helps. Does this in a more difficult way? I'm going to go back to basics and do this. You know that if you have a number like three to the negative two, it's one over three to the positive two. Or you want to try to remember it before the final. I'm going to rewrite this the way it really is. e to the x plus one over e to the x equals 7. OK, now why make it even uglier? Here's the answer. I might have made it uglier, but I have also made it a lot easier to work. Here we're going to go back to what you learned about rational equations, fraction equations. What do you do? You multiply each term by the LCD. With the goal being, you're going to cancel out all the denominators. Well, sometimes you're lucky enough you've only got one denominator. I'm going to move the uh, microphone. I'm afraid I'm blasting you out, and it's not what I'm trying to do. Okay, so when you're lucky enough to have one denominator, that one denominator becomes your LCD. So the LCD, lowest common denominator, is going to be e to the x. What do you know? So, here we've got e to the x plus, I just tipped my tablet and this is what happens, 1 over e to the x equals 7. And here's my LCD. I am going to multiply each term by E to the X. And when I multiply a fraction by a whole number, I put it in the numerator, E to the X. E to the X. And conveniently, the, the LCD does its job the e to the x's cancel out. Which means at least I don't have to deal with fractions. Now what I do have is e to the x times e to the x. Remember that when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So e to the x times e to the x is going to be e to the x plus x plus there's only a one left here one equals seven times e to the x so i'm going to put in a separate step here and i'm just going to say e to the two x plus 1 equals 7 times e to the x. 
well, this is a truly weird equation. I am going to subtract seven times e to the x from both sides of the equation. And in a minute, if you haven't already seen it, you're about to see it. This is e to the 2x minus 7 times e to the x plus 1 equals 0. Now look at this. Go back to when you use u substitution. When this power is 2 times that power. And 2x is 2 times that power. So I'm going to use u substitution now. Let u equal e to the x. Then u squared is going to be e to the x squared. Well, when you have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. So u squared equals e to the 2x. So now we can write this as a quadratic equation and solve it. We can have this be u squared minus 7u plus 1. Yep, equals 0. Piece of cake, right? OK. Now, there's a 1 in front of the u squared. I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula because there's no way I can use the typical factoring formulas to factor that. There are no factors of 1 that equal negative, that add up to negative 7. So A equals 1 and B equals negative 7 and C equals 1. And now, I'm solving for u, then I'll resubstitute. So u equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So that's going to be u equals negative b, that's negative negative 7, plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1. over 2 times 1. So u equals 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared is 49 minus 4 times 1 times 1 is minus 4 over 2. So u equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 45 over 2. My goodness.
think we'll just keep coming straight down. All right, well, 45 equals 9 times 5. And 9 is a perfect square. I sure would have liked this if it had gone a little better. 7 plus or minus the square root of 9 times 5 over 2. That'll be 7 plus or minus the square root of 9 times the square root of 5 over 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So we are going to have u equals 7 plus or minus 3 times the square root of 5 over 2. Most of the time, yeah, yeah, there is nothing I can do. Okay. I'm looking at this hoping I got some of the numbers wrong because I'm letting myself worry ahead of time. But, no. Okay, we're going to have you, we're going to fight on. U equals 7 minus 3 times the square root of 5 over 2. And U equals 7 plus 3 times the square root of 5 over 2. But, she said, but, and I'm waving my hand. U equals, if we go back up here, we'll see, U equals E to the X. So, E to the X equals 7 minus 3 times the square root of 5 over 2. And E to the X equals 7 plus 3 times the square root of 5 over 2. Now, we're almost at where we can solve for x. Now, at this point, I'm sure everybody feels like falling over dead, but don't do it yet. Because all we have to do is take the ln of both sides. The ln, the reason I'm using ln is that there's an e in this equation, and this one. The ln of e to the x equals the ln of 7 minus 3 times the square root of 5 over 2. We'll just do this one right now. Do I have room to do that one? How much room do I have? Hmm. Okay. So the ln, ah, ah, stop it. The whole reason we use logarithms, ln is just a logarithm. It's the natural log, is to bring the x down in front. x. times the ln of e equals the ln of this somewhat ugly thing right here. 7 minus 3 times the square root of 5 all over 2. But if you pop into your calculator for a minute or remember what we talked about yesterday, ln of e, I'm going to put a note somewhere. I'll put it over here. The ln of e is log equals log base e of e because ln is log base e.
Well, when the base of the logarithm equals the argument, when those two numbers are exactly the same, your answer is one. Your calculator would tell you that the ln of e is one. OK, so this is just one. X times one is X. This is what X equals if you're crazy enough. Now we still have to do the other one. Seven minus three times the square root of five over two. And you can probably already guess what the answer to the other one would be. The other answer would be X equals the ln of seven plus three times the square root of five over two. These are the exact answers. But that's not what they're asking for. What they're asking for is the approximate solutions and round to the nearest hundredth this time, which is two decimal places. So this X equals negative what, well, is about squiggle. Let's bring them down here. X equals X squiggle negative 1.92 X squiggle positive 1.92. Woohoo! Was that hard or was that hard? That takes practice. We've got another one just like it. E to the X plus E to the negative X is equals three. Solve it exactly the same way. And then we have this, which is a little bit different. So this is what I will wrap up our wonderful day today with. And I'm kind of saying a secret prayer that my computer, my main computer out there is still working after what ended up being an incredibly long update. Usually updates take like five minutes on my main computer. But this one, oh golly gee. Okay, here we go. Number 13 in your homework is a little bit different. 4 times e to the x equals 12 minus e to the negative x. Double check that, make sure it's right. 4 times e to the x equals 12 minus e to the negative x. Okay. I'm going to do this the same way to start off. Probably the same way, no matter what. E to the X equals 12 minus 1 over E to the positive X. And now I'll multiply each term by e to the x, because that's our only denominator, times e to the x, times e to the x, times e to the x. 
and this one cancels, which is the job of the lowest common denominator. So we're going to have 4 e to the 2x, e to the x times e to the x is e to the x plus x, x plus x is 2x, equals 12 times e to the x minus 1. And we move everything over to the other side, just like we did before. So I'll subtract 12 times e to the x and add 1 and subtract 12 times e to the x and add 1. So that I have 4 e to the 2x minus 12 e to the x plus 1 equals 0. And now since 2x is 2 times 1x, I'm going to use u substitution again. Let u equal e to the x. And just like before, u squared will equal e to the 2x. So I'll have 4u squared minus 12u plus 1 equals 0. And so a equals 4, b equals negative 12, C equals 1. And again, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. This time with U, since the letter I'm using is U. U equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So u equals negative, negative 12 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times 4 times 1 and pull out your radical to cover everything that should be under the radical. And then starting out here at the very first negative sign, you draw a fraction bar all over 2 a and a is 4. All right, so u equals positive 12 plus or minus the square root of parentheses negative 12 squared is 144 minus 16 over 8. Now, I honestly have to admit I need a calculator. Well, I don't. 144 minus 16. That's 14, which makes that 13. 14 minus 6 is 8, and 13 minus 1 is 12. Let's see. Okay, that's 14. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Yes, that's right. So this is going to be 12 plus or minus the square root of 128 over 8. So let's factor 128. I know 4 will go into it. 128 will equal 4 
times 32. And 32 equals 16 times 2. So let's see if that's true. If 8 times 16, 8 times 16 really is 128. So 16 times 8 No, it's not. OK, so 128 equals 4 times 32. That's for sure. 16 equals 16 times 2. What am I doing wrong here, gang? All right, we're going to go from scratch. 128 is 2 times 64, which is 2 times 32, which is, oh, come on, really? 2 times 16. All right, all right, and that's two times eight, and that's two times, oh, good grief, four, and that's two times two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it true that two to the seventh power is 128? I know that that's true. Because 2 to the 6th power is 64. So that's true. So U equals 12 plus or minus the square root of 2 to the 6th times two. Why am I doing that? You'll see. Equals 12 plus or minus the square root of two to the sixth times two. Two to the sixth is two to the third. The square root of two to the sixth is two to the third. So this is 12 plus or minus 2 to the third, which is 8, times the square root of 2 over 8. Now, I can't cancel those out. Of course, since I just have to get a calculator answer, I suppose I could have left it 128, but I wanted to remind you how to do this because you're coming into the final. And you are going to have to do this. Remember that the square root of 2 to the 6th is 2 to the 6th divided by 2 because you have an invisible 2 index out here. So that's 2 to the 3 and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So this is 2 to the 3, which is 8. Now, the thing is, that while 8 cancels that, it doesn't cancel that. Therefore, therefore, I'm going to pull out 4 as a common factor. That'll be 4 times 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2 all over 8. 4 goes into 8 2 times. And so u equals 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. And u equals 3 plus 
2 times the square root of 2 over 2. So, almost done. U is e to the x equals this number. And e to the x equals. And no, you can't cancel one way. There would have to be a 2 and a 3. You just can't do it. All right, I'm going to take the ln of both sides because E is in this equation. All right, the ln of e to the x is x. Remembering this is log base e of e to the x. You bring the x down in front, you have x times log base e of e, which means this is 1. So start memorizing that the ln of e is 1. The ln of E equals 1. So here we're going to have X equals the ln of this thing. And X equals the ln of 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. And then you use your calculator and what you get is x equals, let me pull this back, right here, x equals negative 2.456 and x equals 1.07. Zero. Even though these look like they would be exactly opposite, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this has been solving exponential equations. Go home and practice because we're going to be back hopefully on my real computer tomorrow um, solving logarithmic equations and we're going to use exponentials for that. Yes, we are in a very hard part of the semester. For most of you, but not for all. Some people are going to find this easier. What I'm going to do is hope that my main computer is working and then um, I'll go back and do this with the computer, with the calculator and make sure I got the right answers. OK, talk to you tomorrow or later today or by email. But this is definitely going to take practicing which is why you need to get those rules of exponents down. You need to know them. You need to write them on your brain. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. Have a good day. You too. If it's Bye. snowing where you're at, hope you Pardon enjoy me? it. I said it's snowing where we're at, so if it's snowing where you're at, have a hope you enjoy watching it. Oh, man, are you kidding me? No. no. I live in Rogers. <gasps> I live in Rogers, so I'll see. I'll see if it is after I've well, stopped maybe recording. it comes your way. Well, let's sing Christmas songs. <laughs> yes, it's way too early for Christmas songs.
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm a little tired of it from January too. Uh, <laughs> December. Well, I was saying Christmas songs late too. Okay, see you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.